What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season obviously you don't have to follow all the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those you out there who move into the game which need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there who want a few recommendations on what players you could sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode of the sign for guys oh when we're talking about Bundesliga teams with real stadiums lovely kits playing Champions League football lots of money and reasonable objectives do you want like a comfortable RTG? Because if you do, I've got the team for you. It's VFL Wolfsburg of Wolfsburg playing at the Volkswagen Arena. And this is one of my top teams to use if you want what will be called a comfortable, a comfortable RTG. Because in the first season, your objectives are very simple. Qualify for a European competition, easy. Reach the last 16 in the cup, easy. And in the Champions League, the toughest objective is to reach the quarter final. But as you would have seen in the Champions League group of Wolfsburg starting, well, this season they finished rock bottom in fourth. But it's definitely a group that you'd fancy your chance of getting out of with a four star team with some decent young talent as well. Yeah, this is a brilliant team for a FIFA career mode, man. I highly recommend them. You've got the really nice pale green kits. I love the goalkeeping kit as well. And it's got the the real stadium, the Volkswagen Arena, you're playing in the Champions League from season one and your starting budget is around 45 million. Really, there's no negative to this Wolfsburg side. It's a really great, again, comfortable RTG. Wolfsburg's history is a very simple one. In Europe, they've never won a Champions League or Europa League. I think the furthest they've gone into Champions League was a few years ago when they got to the quarterfinals. I believe that's the furthest they've ever gone in Europe. In the Bundesliga, they've won one Bundesliga and in the DFB Pokal, they've won one DFB Pokal. So it's a side who are starving for major honours, primarily domestically, but also one day dreaming of European honours as well. And yeah, you can definitely bring it to them for an RTG. I highly recommend these guys. Now, again, they're a four-star team, as you'll see. And once again, there's very little challenge in the first season, even with the side you've got. Now, they play a three-at-the-back system. And I would recommend changing Jerome Roussillon from a LB to a LM. What you'll notice with Wolfsburg is that you might have to do a few position changes to sort of sort the side out, if you will, and get them playing in their preferred roles. Um, and a couple of players are out on low with first-team quality, too. I'd recall Mar Marine Pongracic, who's a Croatian currently playing for Dortmund. And I'd also recommend recording another Croatian, Josip Brekolo. He's the young forward who currently plays on loan in Turin for Torino. They've both got first team quality to either be starters in this team or on the bench. There's not a great deal of CB depth here at Wolfsburg, and you're probably going to sell John Anthony Brooks in the first season too. So, yeah, I would recall both of those players for the bench, or if not, in the starting 11. Um, in terms of sales with Wolfsburg, you saw our transfer list there. Again, not many players to sell. You don't need to do a major rebuild of Wolfsburg. But you probably want to shift on a few of those older players for more first-team quality. I wouldn't be against selling Max Caruso. He does have good first-team quality to start with, but you can get around £18 million pounds for the guy. We sold him to Aston Villa for 16 mil and again he's got great first team quality it'd be a starter in this team but I would look to sell at 33 years old he'll decline from the very first season and bring in a new centre forward and a player I'd recommend well I think he'd be absolutely perfect for this Wolfsburg system Yep, it is Jamal Musiala, uh, of course, the former England youth international that now represents Germany on the international stage. Playing for Bayern Munich, he's just 18 years old. He's valued at £32 million. But let me tell you guys, this is one of the best young players in the game. 79 is his starting overall, but this guy can get into the 90s. And at just 18 years old, already a starter with high potential as well. He's absolutely perfect for this Wolfsburg 3-4-2-1. Now, again, he is a CAM by... Uh, sorry, he's an LM uh, listed position, but... This guy, to me, whilst he can play out there with some reasonable pace and great dribbling and five-star, four-star, I think he'd be better playing through the middle and as a centre forward in this team. He's got a good finishing, attacking position and long shot stat with good vision uh, and also ball control and dribbling too. To me, I would sell Max Caruso and bring this guy in. Yes, you'd have to spend quite a lot of money. We spent £40 million to bring him in. That's almost the entire starting budget with Wolfsburg, but... 
Definitely worth every single penny. Why? Well, because he can reach 90 overall. He'll be a starter for in the very first season. That'll maximise potential. And he'll be an ideal player to sit behind Lucas and Metcher up top. So in terms of other sales, uh, we sold Pavan, who is our backup goalkeeper. He's 74 overall, but Cohen Castells is the captain here. He's 85 rated and 29 years old. And the Belgian is not going to let go of that starting goalkeeper role. So you don't really need a backup goalkeeper with quality in the first two or three years. I, I would just sell personally and look for a younger goalkeeper. And we also sold William as well. This is a young South American fullback, 73 rated, 26 years old. And again, because Wolfsburg play a free at the back system, you want your fullbacks or your wing backs or your wide midfielders to be interchangeable. Players who can play both deeper and also a little bit further forward as well. I will personally sell William. He's in his mid 20s. His starting overall is not the best. We sold him to Atletico Mineiro for £3 million. Pounds and Pavan went to Fiorentina for 1.6 mil. We're not raising much money for these guys. We are getting their salaries off the books, and that's most important. Um, in terms of a new backup goalkeeper, I'll sign for Wolfsburg for Castells. Well, how about one Belgian understudy to learn under another? Once again, Cohen's going to be a starting goalkeeper for at least two to three years, at the very, very least, probably four or five, really. So you don't need someone with what you call first team quality in the first two or three years, but someone who's a young goalkeeper who's got an okay start starting overall to sit on the bench and can get better for the future. I recommend this guy for practically every single career mode. It is Martin van der Voort of KSC Genk. You can get him for under the valuation. He's just 19 years old, so a decade younger than Stales. And yes, he's 15 ratings lower, but he grows 14 ratings to 84. So in the future, he can step in as the replacement for Castells. And I really like that as well. One young Belgian goalkeeper learning under another. In real life, he's going to join RB Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig in 2024 I think it is but in the game you can get him in the first season I recommend him as your new backup goalkeeper and your understudy for Castells as uh, so we saw William to Athletic Monero and we did finally get a bid for John Anthony Brooks this took a while now with Brooks if you want you can keep him a 78 overall that makes him one of the best defenders you've got but whilst he will probably grow a rating and he's 28 years old doing the prime of his career right now I personally would sell and look to bring in someone better and someone a little bit younger as well. We sold him to Lazio for 11.5 million. That's his valuation. That's okay. And again, if you want to keep him, you can do so. He's not going to decline for at least two or three years, but I personally would sell in the very first season. Once again, it's, it's personal preference really, but I would look to make this side younger and also better as well. So 78 overall is a good starting overall, one of the best defenders you'd have in the team, but you can get better and you can get slightly younger. So we sold him to Aston Villa in the end. Sorry, not Lazio, but for the same fee, 11.5 mil. And a player I'd replace him with, well, he's only a year younger, but he's also five ratings higher. Yes, Matthias Ginter of Borussia Mönchengladbach out of contract at Borussia Park at the end of the season, which means you can get him for under the valuation of 31.5 mil. 83 overall means he's got great starting ability. And at 27 as well, he's in the prime of his career right now and could still get a rating or two higher. And be one of the best centre halves in the Bundesliga. You can get him for around £27 million. I believe that's what we paid. And again, much better than Brooks, five ratings higher and a year younger as well. And again, a really cheap deal available for under 30 mil. There aren't many centre-backs in the game that have a starting overall as good as his. In the prime of their careers right now, you can get for under 30 mil. Matthias Ginter is one of the very few you can get, and he would fit this Wolfsburg team like an absolute glove. Great defensive stats, solid player and team player traits. You know I love that. And again, if you get the defensive work credit from medium to high, improved at reasonably low pace, this guy will be a great ball playing defender in your team and at six foot three as well he's got height he's a he's a really solid player in the back three better than Brooks younger than Brooks and could still get slightly better as well um, so following that, one thing I did do is change Maximilian Arnold's position from holding mid to CM. Don't ask me why I forgot to do that at the start of the save, but I did. And as you'll see, uh, Roussillon's change was complete here. We changed it from LL, uh, sorry, LB to LM. So swapped the primary and secondary positions around. That's our grow our rating to 77 overall. Once again, with Wolfsburg, um, the 3-4-2-1 three, the three, they operate with means that you can either push your, uh, push your wide midfielders deeper to wing backs and play effectively a Five, uh, five. What would it be then? A five. 
two, two, one, I think it would be then. Got to get confused sometimes. But um, if you want to keep them as natural wide midfielders, then I'd change Roussillon's position to LB to LM. That saw him grow our rating as well. And we also sold um, Stefan as well to Bayer Leverkusen for 7.5 mil. Uh, this is an, an okay fullback in the team, uh, fullback slash wide midfielder. Once again, an interchangeable wide player, if you will. We sold him for 7.5 mil, and I would personally do that. He's in his mid to late 20s now. You can get better and you can get younger as well. And after we changed the position of Musiala, we saw him grow our rating to 80 overall. Once again, he can play on the flank, but to me, I think it'd be much better through the heart of the t heart of the team, through the middle and further forward in the attacking mid or centre forward role. So once we changed position, he grew to 80 overall. And after the little bit of season ticket money came in, we had around 18 million pounds to sign one or two more players. And after selling Stefan, I would recommend a new player for that left hand side in this Wolfsburg team with Riddle Baku on the right hand side. And a player I'd recommend, very interesting one. Ryan Sessegnon, and let me tell you why. Now, this guy has actually had a loan spell in Germany before. He had a successful loan spell at Hoffenheim a, few, a couple of years ago, so he spent time playing in the Bundesliga, and I think he'd be a brilliant fit for Wolfsburg because, well, as you know, and as you'll probably know if you spent time watching him play, he is listed as a wing-back, but he spent time playing on the wing, as a natural LM and as a fullback. This guy has played all down the flank of the left hand side and you can get him for a round evaluation if not under that as well. He's only 21 years old and 76 rated. I've watched a guy play for both Fulham and Spurs and to me I've always thought he's better further forward than he is as a wing back slash fullback and in this Wolfsburg team He'd be literally perfect on that left-hand side because, again, he's got some okay defensive stats, but he's very good when going forward with high-medium work rates. Personally, what I would do is change him from LWB to LM. That'll only take him two weeks for the position change to be completed. That'll capitalise on the good pace he's got. He's got some okay stamina as well, and again, four-star skill moves. It offers something going forward, and also, eventually, I'd change his defensive work rate up from medium to high. Yeah, really solid player, and again, you can get him for under the value is an absolute bargain and Jerome is a good starting LM in this team at 77 overall but personally I would start Ryan Sessegnon from the get-go even though he's a rating lower because he's six years younger and has 83 potential as well I really do feel as though when you are playing a free at the back system you've got to make sure your wide midfielders can both be solid defensively but also offer a lot of creativity on going forward with good stamina Baku has that on the right hand side he's one of my favorite players in the game actually at 80 overall with 85 potential you just need someone to pair him with on the left hand side for now and a future Ryan Sessegnon meets that criteria really, really well. So as you'll see, one of the final signings I made was this guy. Um, I think you'll know that I've signed this guy in an abundance of my Huda Sign for episodes. He is one of my favourite players in FIFA 22. He really is. It is Bozoa of Vitesse. If you are looking for a versatile jack-of-all-trades bargain buy, there's no one better in the game. And I stand by that as well. There is no one better in the game than this guy for a versatile utility man that can play anywhere on a budget deal. His deals are coming at the end of the year with a test at 8.5 mil devaluation. You can get him for less than that. We spent, I think it was 2 mil plus Yannick Gerhardt as well. And whilst Yannick is the same overall at 76 overall, Bazoa is a few years younger and also has 80 potential as well. And of course, he'll get much better when you change his position. Yeah, I've talked about it before. Bazoa starts off as a centre half with the test. And he can play there. Of course he can. This guy can play literally anywhere. You can have this guy anywhere in the outfield positions and he'll do a solid job. But to me, I would say he's better as a central midfielder. So that's where I'd change his position to. It'd be a successor for Yannick Gerhardt and he can give some position, uh, some competition uh, for the Wolfsburg CM area as the years go by. So yeah, I, I do recommend him for this Wolfsburg team. And one of the final, I pick, the final signs I picked up was this guy right here. Um, yes, obviously he's a bit of a cheat code in FIFA 22, but having him in your team is better than having him play against
against you. Mukoko, uh, Yusufa Mukoko, the teenage wonder kid at Borussia Dortmund. 16 years old, starts off 69 overall, but he's got 89 potential. Four star, four star, very, very quick, and already at just 16 years old, 75 finishing. Unbelievable. Yep, this guy, definitely pick him up as your long term number nine with VFE, uh, VFL Wolfsburg. Obviously, a match will be your starting striker for the first three to four years minimum, but eventually Mukoko will become one of the best strikers in world football. So, yeah, definitely have him in your team. And the final signing I picked up was this guy right here, just to add some more squad depth and get some good young German talent. Uh, Sidney Rabiger of RB Leipzig. This guy you can get for a round evaluation of just over £1 million. Pounds. He's only 16 years old like Mukoko, so he's a teenage wonder kid, really. 62 is a starting overall. Very, very low. In the first three or four years, you'll barely give the guy a minute on the pitch, but he's got 85 potentials in the future. He and Mukoko, whilst in the first couple of seasons, won't play much in the future. They'll be really key members for your Wolfsburg side. So, yeah, always nice to get good, young talent to play for the same country as the club you're managing with. Yeah, and Rybiger and Mukoko are two of the absolute best in Germany. German football. So after the signings there, we were basically done with transfers with Wolfsburg. Uh, you'll see we changed Arnold's position from uh, CDM to CM. That's where we grow our rating to 81 overall. And as you'll see, after spending practically every single penny, I'm really happy with the business we did in the first transfer window. Stefan, Brooks, William, uh, Pervan and Cruz as well. Two players in their 30s and the rest in their mid to late 20s leaving. But the young talent coming in, unbelievable. Yes, Ginter at 27 would see him be the oldest player coming in. But Bazoa still grows a few ratings at 24. And then the rest of them, either teenage talents or in their early 20s. You'll see that Ginter goes right in the first 11. Musiala goes right in the first 11. As does Ryan Sessignon. And then you've got Bazoa and Van der Ver off the bench with good young talent in Mukoko and Rybiger for the future as well. This is what you call a really comfortable RTG. The objectives are really, really easy. Even the Champions League is a doable one because your group is quite simple as well. You've got loads of money to play with, a couple of good young talents here already. Yeah, I love this team for an RTG in this year's FIFA Crema. So as per usual, we're assuming at the end of the season and as you can see... Well, I felt pretty confident we had indeed qualified for a European competition in the Bundesliga. That would mean a top six finish. And we did do that with a fifth place finish in the end. We only missed out on the Champions League on the final day too. We lost to Bayern Munich, unfortunately. And that meant Leipzig leapfrogged us and went to the top four. So had we won on the final day or even just got a point, we would have had a top four finish. So gutted about that. And in the first season with Wolfsburg again, you know, finishing in the top six, it, it's definitely doable. The Bundesliga has a time of quality, man. I mean, Eintracht Frankfurt won the Europa League this year. you got Dortmund, you got uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, Bayern Munich, of course, how can we forget, Leverkusen, etc, etc. But it, it's definitely a league where if you're managing a team of Wolfsburg stature, top six really is a minimum you should be asking for. We did that, reached the last 16 of the Cup, so hit that objective as well as Bayern won it. And again, the Champions League, don't forget, whilst Wolfsburg finished rock bottom in a group in real life, you got Sevilla, Lille, and also RB Salzburg. That's a group you should be able to get out of in the first season. We did that, beat Milan in the last 16, but we're knocked out by Paris Saint-Germain in the quarterfinals, who ended up winning the whole thing. So yeah, I would definitely say with Wolfsburg, all three of those objectives are more than doable, particularly domestically. Those are pretty simple objectives in my opinion top six is a you know it, it's a pretty simple objective to give this Wolfsburg side and reach the last 16 you only got to go through one round in the cup to hit that objective and even the Champions League once again the group you've got is quite a favorable one so there's no reason why you can't go to the quarterfinals that's exactly what we did but I have to say in terms of RTGs this is this is definitely one of the most fun you can have because it, it's not tough you know most RTGs are just what they sound like tough long-term projects that are very very challenging especially in the early years but Wolfsburg aren't like that they're very very unique they're a team that do need a lot of change in order to start winning their first ever European honours and win domestic honours once again but they've got tons of money a good starting team with a couple of really decent young talents as well it's definitely a really fun team to do a career mode with because it's an RTG, but it doesn't feel like a challenge. It's a really, really good long-term project, three or four year minimum project, I would say, but with a really good starting base, loads of money and low objectives. You love to see it, you really do. So 
yeah, I'll definitely give these guys a go. They've got three nice kits, and the goalkeeping kit's nice too. They've got the Volkswagen Arena in the game, which is a fabulous stadium from the exterior. It looks absolutely beautiful. It is in the game as well. And once again, this is a side with not many major honours in the club's history. One Bundesliga, one DFB Pokal, and no European titles. If you're looking for an RTG with lots of money to work with, a couple of decent young talents to begin with, but some players that will need to be shipped on as well. Real kits, real stadium but a long way to go with simple objectives in season one I don't think there's a better team in the Bundesliga than VfL Wolfsburg I definitely give them a go had loads of fun rebuilding this so we changed them for a four star team to a four and a half star team you saw Sessegnon and Bazal's position changes there got them up to 81 and 82 overall respectively to go right into our first 11 yeah it's a it's a really fun team I highly recommend them for an RTG which is what you'd call a comfortable one loads of fun and really just a team you can do whatever you want with with the money and the low objectives too but that will end today's episode of the sign for guys big thank you for watching hope you have enjoyed if you had then please do drop a like most love to you all have a fantastic day and i will see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon